Hi, my name is Nisha Joseph, and I'm an assistant professor at the Winship Cancer Institute at Emory University. And I'm here to share results from one of our abstracts that we presented at the most recent ASCO meeting entitled Prognostic Impact of Translocation 1114 on PFS1 or first remission among myeloma patients receiving triplet induction therapy. And essentially the goal of this retrospective analysis was to look specifically at patients that had this translocation and to look at their uh, response rates to standard therapy that we give upfront to myeloma patients and to look at differences in survival between patients with and without this translocation. So um, translocation 1114 is uh, standardly considered a standard risk prognostic factor, but recent studies have challenged this notion. And this becomes relevant because we now have a drug called venetoclax that has been shown to be particularly effective in patients with this translocation. And you can see here on the right an example, looking at venetoclax in combination with daratumumab and dexamethasone, and we're seeing overall response rates north of 90%. And so here we wanted to review the prognostic impact of 1114, looking at patients specifically treated at our institution, um, because it's relevant to see how they respond to what we use standardly for all patients uh, to see if they need to be um, a different treatment approach needs to be considered for these patients. So what we did, this is a database we have published on uh, before. It was 1,000 patients that were consecutively treated with lenalidomide, bortezomib, and dexamethasone between 2008 and 2016 at our patients. For this uh, subgroup analysis, we specifically looked at patients who were first tested for 1114, which is about 870 patients. And then um, we identified those who had and did not have 1114. So in this analysis, 121 patients had 1114 and 748 did not. We also looked at the uh, concomitant rate of high risk, other high risk features, so deletion 17P and other translocations um, with a chromosome 14, including 414 and 1416. And then we created um, a synthetic control group of all patients who had had received maintenance therapy, and we removed patients who also had other high risk features um, so that we didn't muddy the waters when we looked at this analysis. <clears throat> The median follow-up for this group was seven and a half years, and all of the demographic and outcomes uh, data was obtained from our, uh, uh, our database of myeloma patients from our institution. So just to give context, when we looked at the entire group of 1,000 patients, um, the progression-free survival was about 68.7 months, and the overall survival uh, was um, close to 13 years for this group, which was very impressive. Um, and these are, again, all patients treated with RVD induction therapy and maintenance. Specifically, when we looked at standard versus high-risk patients, you can see a real separation in the curves uh, with the progression-free survival being 80 versus 40 months um, and the uh, overall survival um, being not reached in the standard risk group versus 86 months in the high risk group. So keep those numbers in mind when we talk about the 1114 group. So in the 1114 patients, the median age was 61 years. Interestingly, there was a higher rate of 114 in black patients, which has been described. Um, and the most common other high risk feature was deletion 17P occurring concurrently with 1114. Um, we did see higher rates of gain of one Q and deletion 13 in 1114 patients. When we looked at response rates, so this is um, how did the myeloma respond after induction therapy and then again after transplant. You can see on the left is post-induction, on the right is post-transplant. When we look at overall response rate, which is the yellow bars, it's similar among the groups, but when we look at depth of response, so specifically obtaining a VGPR or better, meaning a 90% reduction in the amount of myeloma, that's the gray bar, you can see there's a significant difference between patients with the 1114 and no 1114, both post-induction and post-transplant, with the VGPR rate being for the 1114 patients being 48% and then 83% versus 71% and 92% in patients who did not have 1114. So when we look at progression-free survival for patients with translocation 1114 versus patients who did not have translocation 1114, the no translocation 1114 is the green line and the patients with 1114 is the blue line. And so what you can see is a significant difference between progression-free survival or the time to first relapse um, with the PFS being 82.6 months in patients without and 61.4 months in patients with 1114. So conclusions of this analysis, even with the use of modern day induction regimens, 
we're seeing inferior response rates in patients with translocation 1114 compared to other standard risk myelomas. And so the lower rates of uh, VGPR, the lower response rates post-induction and post-transplant and the shorter survival might suggest that uh, these patients might benefit from a different um, upfront treatment approach, such as incorporating venetoclax. Uh, 